Can this little controller be used in sound reactive applications? Yes and no. Just over my shoulder there, you will see an ESP01, one of those little controllers reacting to the sound of my voice and the wind and the planes and the trees. Whenever I talk into this microphone, it's um, dancing to the, the sounds. So this microphone, this bit here, is just a design I got off Thingiverse and I modified it so it would fit a ESP32 into it. So what's happening is um, there's the microphone in here, and there's the ESP32, you're not going to see the light in there, and uh, it's streaming the audio, well the lights, commands to the ESP01. Uh, so if you have a look around you can't actually get firmware well, current firmware to run the ESP01 was Sound Reactive, it just doesn't have the um, capacity, I guess. I've never tried it. The fact there is no real hardware or firmware available. I mean, if you really determined, you could probably do it, but um, I don't think they can run it particularly well. If you don't know much about Sound Reactive with the ESP32, look at my last uh, video where I went through the configuration of it. In that video, I used that analog microphone to get it up and working and to save yourself a lot of agony don't use an analog microphone when I used that analog microphone it had a weird sort of effects like this where I was pulsing so an analog microphone picks up anything power going through your house just any sort of noise and it's right next to a Wi-Fi unit so it had a lot of time and you wanted to play around with filters and all sorts of stuff you might be able to get a decent signal but I spent a long time trying to get that fixed and it's just always had this weird noise thing going on so as soon as I got a I2C microphone everything works perfectly so forget about analog microphones with sound reactive go straight for the I2C because it just works perfectly out of the box there's no buzzing or humming noise it's picking up on it's just picking up on audio so how do I get the light signals from this microphone here over to the the light stick over there well there's this cool setting within the WLED software or firmware which allows you to send the light data directly to an IP address so let's have a look at that so here we are in the WLED software for this particular controller so if I choose um, solid it goes solid and I can change all the colors around like before this is all without any wires uh, so what you do is you go into your um, config, your LED preferences and down here under LED outputs you'd normally choose your light strip and how many LEDs it has. I'm choosing DDP RGB and that allows me to put an IP address in for that lamp. The other cool thing is that obviously ESP32 can act in AP mode and then it just issues that IP addresses to all your nodes around so this is my lights and my micro on a closed network so if I wanted to I could join the network and play with the lights but I could take this anywhere right plug it in and it'll just start working and dancing and all those sorts of things and I'm not limited to just to one output I can add multiple outputs which is great for me because I'm going to I'm going to have 12 of those things going around my trampoline and if, if I had a microphone in each one and that did work that will be you know get different volume sounds but with this uh, with my 12 LED lamps and my single source of sound they'll all you know beat to the same frequency which is cool so uh, I've just when this boots up if I go back into my nodes list here it tells me the IP address of the, the node over there and I can plug that into that setting so it's DC, DHCP at the moment um, so it's sort of, you know, it might issue the wrong, a different IP address. So once you get it going, you might want to set the IP address in your nodes to a static number and then put the static number in here. So you, every time you turn it on, they all get the same address as they did the last time they booted up. I booted this up a couple of times and it's gone 4.3, 2.3, then back to 2. So it's sort of not um, assigning the same IP address every single time, which could be a bit of a hassle, but you've only got 12. Who cares? So once you're all configured up, you can go back and um, to the controls and set your effects again. 
So any noise I make, it's a pretty responsive sort of immediately. Uh, I'm not sure how well it's going to go with multiple connections. It might start stuttering. I'm not too sure. But once I've got the 12 on and the 12 other lamps connected, I'll do another video just so you guys can see it all up and running. So it's cool. So I'll just quickly grab this light just to show you how it works. So this is the third and hopefully last version of this light. It's got a 18650 in here, uh, rechargeable and recharges through these two prongs at the bottom. So the other two versions you'll see in uh, this other video, which is a range test of the SP01. I, um, the first version, the plug on the USB got rusty because I left them out all night. The second version, I tried to protect the USB plug and it's still a bit rusty, so now I've just completely hidden the rest of the USB plug away for the power. And it's got a special module in there, and it's got no um, switch or anything. You just slide this thing back and forward, and it turns the light on and off. So it's just got a read switch in there. So I'll be doing a full build video of this later on, so if you want to make your own, um, you'll be able to, but it, um, I should be able to leave these out without fear of them rusting. There's also an article on my website about this project. Well, you made it all the way to the end. Uh, you should definitely subscribe, and YouTube thinks you'd like this video next.